What is going on, everyone? It is Rob and Johnny. We are here with episode four of MMA Arcade. I went with the second pronunciation of it, Rob. How you going, man? <laughs> why, why the, I'm great. Why, why the switch? You had it so seamlessly last week. Dude, why, I, what like, I like to swap back and forth. It's it, it's pretty good. I like the cho- <laughs> choice, you know, between both of them. It's great. Keep people guessing, keep people guessing. Did you ever think we would get to episode four, mate? Mate, we, us we are a month. I can't remember who I was talking to about it, but they're like, if you can get past that first month, you know you're being consistent and, you, and you're sticking to it. And we are. We're there, man. I'm so excited. We are. And, and let us just say, we are doing it for, for you guys, for the listeners and the, the YouTube commenters and everybody that's leaving comments and suggestions saying that this yep. is like, this makes their day. They love listening to it. X, Y, Z. Like you guys are honestly fueling us and yeah, we appreciate you guys tuning in. Honestly, 100% seeing everyone so stoked in the comments. We appreciate the support. If you are watching on YouTube, by the way, please do subscribe. It really does support the channel. Also like the video if you can, but Rob, we've got a we've got a big episode this week. There's a lot happening, especially in the MMA world. You know what I mean? Yeah, we do. We do. Um, obviously, this card, this UFC card on the weekend. Yeah. Um, UFC 287, Alex Pereira versus Israel Adesanya. That, That's uh, right. I have a lot of invested interest in it. You know, you I've do. been speaking to the UFC, yep. and they they let me know that. We're going to wait till the weekend to see what direction you take. So I can only imagine that oh. the, the the results of this fight impact my next fight. So I'm going to be watching this very closely. Man, and, uh, 100%. Yeah, you know, I'm really keen to talk to you about it. And we'll obviously kick off with the the main event, Alex Pereira against Israel Adesanya. Start at the top. 100%. And then we'll, we'll speak about the others as well. As always, we've got some gaming news. And kind of in the gaming news, still some more MMA stuff, which is pretty cool. We'll talk about what we're watching and playing. And at the end, we'll cover some fan questions. If you're watching along on YouTube, time stands, stamps, I should say, are in the description below. But let's do it, Rob. Starting off with the main event, Alex Pereira, Israel Adesanya. So their record's going in. Like Pereira is undefeated so far in the UFC, 4-0. and zero. Israel Alex Adesanya has an incredible record as well, but he was just dethroned, of course, by the person that he's fighting against. What do you think about this fight, Rob? I want you to, to have your moment because, as you said, you're very closely invested in this one. Yeah, um... Yeah, UFC 287, you know, we're here. This has been something that's been lurking around the corner and everyone's been asking me questions. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> who's going to win? What can Izzy do differently? What yeah. is Pereira going to win? Who do you, would you rather fight? I, I haven't heard the end of it, but <laughs> we're finally coming to a head where these two guys are going to give us the result that everyone is wanting to, to, to see and hear. I guess, well, let me just point out, isn't mm. it crazy that, uh, per, per, Pereira. I'm going to say Pereira. I know it's Pereira or Pereira or however the hell you say it. But okay, per, per, Pereira. Yeah. Isn't it crazy that he's had four fights in the UFC? That's right. Like, like, and one of those was him beating Izzy. So he mm-hmm. went for a title shot with three. I think that's just such a, you know, UFC. And the, the industry, they love a story. They love that story and that mm. villain arc of Pereira coming in, chasing him across sports. Yep. You know, after after what after that goal, like that was such a compelling story that it got him to a title shot within three fights. Within three fights. That is unreal. And I think it should be that way. I have no qualms. Uh, it mixes up the division. It for sure. It it halts everyone's progress a little bit. But mate, it's a good story. <laughs> yeah, no, it only it only brings more eyes to to the game itself. Hundred percent, man. Like the last time that really kicked off, I remember Brock Lesnar obviously did that. He had how many fights mm. before he got a title shot? Ended up winning. It's awesome, as we said in the other episode as well. It's all about business. I know it's like it, it's the meritocracy. You go through, you have your nine, ten, however many fights, and you get your title shot. But it's nice to see something a little bit different. And plus, I think it came down to the peculiarities of your division because. You were the gatekeeper as we as we were talking about for a while. <laughs> and because Pereira oh, yeah. had that history with Adesanya, it was the fight to make. It made complete sense. Yeah. Uh, I'm the gatekeeper. <laughs> but hold on. Hold, we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about oh, it because <laughs> as you said, as you said, we'll get into the fight predictions. But as you said, what happens this weekend is key for you in particular, mm-hmm. especially if... 
Izzy comes with the away with the loss again for the second time. So mm. how do you feel about that? Well, everybody lean in, okay? Everybody <laughs> lean in. The, this, I'm, I've been waiting this, for this. These, yeah, <laughs> these are my thoughts for Alex versus Israel, okay? Yeah. Now, this is very dependent on how Israel comes back after that loss against Pereira, Yeah. okay? W- one way of him taking it is Pereira's got my number, Okay, mm. I did everything right last fight. I was winning the fight and I still lost. And now this is the third time and second time in a row he's been stopped uh, by by Pereira. Mm. Okay, he can he can think like that. And, you know, he can say and do whatever he wants. He can train as hard as he's ever going to train, which he has, I'm sure. Mm. And he can do all his business. But then when he gets into the octagon, he knows that Pereira's got his number. Okay, that's one way. Mm. That's one way. Or... The worst has happened. Pereira, the story, the story has happened. He went cross sports, chased me. They built him up in three fights. We fought. He finished me in front of the world. The story had the ending everybody was kind of hoping would happen. Yeah. Okay. And when I say hoping, I mean the story arc people. Okay. Yeah. You you get it. You get it. <laughs> um, and that frees him up. All the all the worries, all the thoughts, all the responsibilities. Now he is now the challenger. He he sets sits in that space where he knows he was winning that fight and just got clipped at the end. Mm. He knows he was winning four out of five rounds, um, five five of those rounds. Even he knows he was winning the fight up until that point. He knows he can beat him. He knows as a challenger, he's got nothing on his shoulders. Everyone, plan- Everybody thinks Pereira's going to beat him again, and he goes into this fight just free, creative, um, unorthodox. And, yeah, I think they're th- I, I honestly think they're the two different types of Israel we're going to see because, mate, I, after three fights and three losses, mm. surely – you know, surely you've got to think, have a, so have some fears, have some hesitation going in of there. Of course, you know, of but course, man. That's... Like the, we, we were talking about the the matchup, and it he's just his Achilles heel. He's his kryptonite is is the the best way that you can describe it. And as you were saying, and honestly, there's a lot of similarities between this matchup and Usman and and Leon Edwards in, in a way, because as and you said, Leon Adesanya, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But like he was controlling that last fight, he was doing everything right, but one little mistake, one little stumble, and it almost costed him. I think it was the the leg check. So. That fear, I, I worry for Adesanya that he won't be able to overcome that. No matter wh- how mm. perfectly he plans his fight for that, because there's five rounds, tons of rounds. If if he makes one little mistake or, or, or stumble, I think that's going to be it because Pereira is so powerful. He, yeah. he gets some of those hits in. Like Adesanya's not going to know what to do. Yeah, and Pereira's always locked in. He's always in prime position to unload some heavy yeah. strikes or heavy yeah. kicks. He's fast, very technical, like yeah. stalks you down almost, and he's just primed, yeah. locked, and loaded. But we saw Adesanya's best moments in that fight when he is free, when he's being creative, yeah. when he's using his range and his unorthodox way of striking and kicking mm. that really started putting Pereira on off balance because the yeah. sh- I think that's one of uh, Adesanya's best attributes is that he fires shots from just about everywhere. And yeah. then you put the range and the power and the reach uh, into the mix as well, and, and, and it's dangerous, very, very, very dangerous. But I don't know. It's it's hard to say. You know, Pereira believes it, and I've heard John mm. Jones speak on it as well. He he yeah. believes that some, some fighters just have your number. Mm-hmm. There are just some matchups that do not favor you, that will not end favorably for you. And, um, you know, I, I'm in a mixed mindset because I believe I can beat Adesanya in our third fight. You know, that's a yeah. puzzle <laughs> I, I've, been, I've been cracking at and I'm really excited to, yeah. to, to run again. Yeah. But, um, but, yeah, you know, that's – I guess that, that's my, my standing on it. Okay, look, I, that's uh, your standing, but you're, you're fence-sitting. I'll call you out a little bit. You are fence-sitting. Give me, give me a prediction. Nah. Genuinely, you know, gut feeling – who do you think is going to win this fight? I think Pereira is going to win this yeah. fight. Yeah. I just um, – I think Pereira – the biggest thing when Pereira and Adesanya fought 
the first time in the UFC, so their third fight, but first time in mixed martial arts. Yeah. One of my biggest questions was how the small gloves were going to impact mm. the their fight. Okay, because I I'd seen their their kickboxing fights as well, mm. and uh, that unknown factor was the one thing that I didn't know where to sit on, like which side to take, because I it really it, it's an element nobody can truly appreciate until you're hit with those small gloves. Yeah. Okay. Um, Pereira has fought Adesanya with those small gloves. He understands things about the fight with Adesanya in small gloves that he didn't in fight three. So I think in fight four, mm. the second time in mixed martial arts, he's he's going to be much more comfortable um, in those small gloves in, in the fight with Adesanya because obviously he already knows how Adesanya fights. Yeah, He would know better than anybody else how Adesanya fights and kickboxes. He knows where he can find holes and openings and where he can take advantage of the kicks. Um, so I, I do. I do believe that Alex Pereira might – might just have Izzy's number, and that's just a matchup that is not favorable for Adesanya. Because um, let me just say, Adesanya, his best attributes unorthodox striking. He yeah. fades away, very hard to hit, mm. and he's got he's very tall and very reachy. You know, he, he so he can fade away for and avoid shots, but he can reach out and hit you. At, at weird angles because of the way he stands and stuff. Pereira's kind of like a kryptonite, as you said before, to Adesanya yeah. in, in, in the way that he has reach. He has the reach to get him. He's aggressive and moves forward. He's very good at checking kicks. And with, when Adesanya can't pepper those legs and fade away from shots, he you saw in – when when was it? The fourth with that leg chick that, um you know, fourth hurt or, fifth, or, or remember, stum- yeah. yep. that stumbled Adesanya. Yep. So, um, so that know, being said, Rob, he's just you, got his number. You you hinted at it before that Izzy might need to change something because he's zero and three mm. now. Like he's he's such a in all other respects, like Izzy's probably the more well rounded fighter against anyone else. But against Pereira, has his number clearly. Does he do anything different? Does he approach this fight in a different way? Because it it clearly. It almost worked last time, but it didn't. And now, mm. at every every opportunity, every round, you worry that Pereira is going to pull out a, a hook and just and and take him down. So, does he do anything different? Well, to to Adesanya's defense, Adesanya took a fair few hooks before he got rattled and mm. stumbled. He's got um, a decent chin on him. He really mate, does. He's got a he's got a great chin. He's yeah. got a great chin. He's he's taken big shots from some dudes. Yeah. Um, yeah, he, he a, was he's, saying he's though. Or, he, he was saying, uh, I think it was on Twitter. There's a video somewhere about how he didn't actually think he was getting knocked out. Like he was kind of disputing the whole TKO thing because of the way mm. that he was moving. I don't know whether I yeah. agree with that, but the fact is, you're right. He came very, very late. He took a lot of hits. Yeah. But he, I still think he might need to change something. But what do you think that should be? Well, and, and another thing is, if you look like you're getting knocked out, you're getting knocked out to the ref. He, he was getting like, knocked out. Yeah. No, like, exactly. That, that's how it is. It doesn't yeah. matter whether you were or were not. If that's yeah. what it looks like, the guy, the third party who doesn't, can't yeah. read your mind, yeah. is going to call it the, the way it is. Yeah. But, um, well, we saw for a, li- for a little bit there, we mm. saw Adesanya wrestle and have him on the ground. Yep. So you would think... To throw to throw an element of unknown into uh, a fight where your opponent Alex mm. has so much knowledge and familiarity with how you fight and 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 how that that fight takes place, you would think throwing an unknown factor in like wrestling or or some grappling mm. would be the would be the play. Just like my second fight with Adesanya, yeah, I, I started mixing in a lot of wrestling and I had a lot of success with that. I, th- I think we might see, especially because he already had success with it in the fir- in the first fight in yeah. mixed martial arts. That is, yeah. So, yeah, I, I would I would think that would be that would be the play. But there's also there's also that factor that guys, lifelong stand up guys, that have super high caliber uh, striking. It's they're not super comfortable spamming takedowns, holding people down, grinding them out. Because when they stand back up, a lot of the times their arms just aren't as poppy as they they were when the fight started. They they kicks just aren't as fast. Yeah. And uh, against a guy as, as dangerous as Pereira, mm. you know you don't want to be a tad slower. And on the other side of that, Alex trains with Tejera, mm. you know. And after that first fight with Adesanya and that exchange on the ground, you got to think 
he went straight to <laughs> jujitsu class <laughs> yeah. after that fight. Hundred <laughs> percent. So that that is your mm. prediction. It, it, it is Alex for it the is. win. I, I want to ask I you think- this though, because this has happened numerous times now. I want to ask you about immediate rematches for champions that just <laughs> lost. If Izzy loses this. Should that continue to be a thing or should there be another match in between before you get that rematch? You, know, you mean if Alex loses, right? No, no, no. As in, if because Izzy was the champ, lost, and he got, got an re- immediate rematch, right? Mm-hmm. If he yeah. loses again for the second time, should immediate rematches just not be a thing? Because like we just saw it with Usman that he lost and I'm mm. like sure there's many examples before that as well. I, I just yeah. question whether immediate rematch is actually the right thing for the champ that does lose. Oh, mate, it's it's one of those things that like it's it has a place. I, I do believe it has a place, okay. but I don't I don't think that was a place. But then again, like I said, the story sold so well. Yeah, fair. You know, and and that's the UFC decided like. Oh, let's sell it again. <laughs> let's run this story back. It makes sense. They haven't gotten sick of it yet. Yeah, yeah. And uh, because that Alex, that Alex and Israel story is just gold. I thought it was, mm. and this is me who's who's sitting back thinking like, man, the division's held back. <laughs> it's like <laughs> I thought it was so cool. Like yeah. Alex crossing sports chasing Israel yeah. like a dog, and then yeah. every interview face off or anything, <laughs> Alex has the same stoic like. <laughs> <laughs> like j- business <laughs> face, like it's it's cool, dude. He's got um, such a scary face, man. Are you meeting him in mate, the dark alley? Good lord, <laughs> mate. He's yeah, he's he's got a skill set on him. He really does. He's a yeah. hard fight for anyone, but yeah. yeah, it does it does tie up it does tie up divisions. Like re- immediate rematches do tie up divisions. Um, yeah, I I think. I think there are there has to be special cases. I believe, like if you, I think there it should be a rule almost. Like if you defend ten times, you get an yep. immediate rematch. Yeah, because if you're the champion, you can and you lose, you can just starch one dude and then go back. Like if you're that good. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's uh, but like what? Yeah, the guys that defend ten times, that long reigning guys, like when Nunes lost or mm. Shevchenko now, like mm. they deserve it because they've just been reigning dominant. Yeah. They clean out divisions and then they get replaced. The division yeah. gets replaced with fresher bodies and then they clean them out and sort of thing. Fair, yeah. So, so I, that I'm is your prediction. I'm on the fence about it. Well, My you say you're on the fence. Is yeah. Pereira to win. Pere- Pereira but to I'm win. I'm on the fence about. Uh, I'm yeah. on the fence about rematches. <laughs> where, where, where they, I wasn't yeah. given a rematch. <laughs> I, I didn't want to mention it, Rob, but like, like I, I, I see a little bit of a trend now, and I do think that hmm. maybe we should go back to the fight someone but else. These, you know, hmm. these these are dudes though. Like, to to their credit, like they've defended t- their titles a fair few times. Like they they they're sure. putting in the work. Sure. To, to earn that to earn that yeah. um. Literally both Usman so, and Adesanya. I don't know how many title defenses that they had or title. Yeah, they they, 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 had. they have they had a fair fair whack of title defenses under their belt, so they they deserved it. Especially because, like I said, the story was just it's so For powerful. Sure. It's For so sure. powerful. The story is almost more important than just about anything else in this game. Yeah. All right. Well, do you, do you have any final thoughts on on this fight? Are you sticking with Pereira for the win? I think Pereira will win by TKO, okay. but if he doesn't, yeah. I think Adesanya wins by decision. Interesting. Okay. I and and given Adesanya almost finished Pereira in the first round of their their last did, fight. Yeah, yeah. But I think Pereira plays a little safer. Does what he did for ninety nine percent of that fight, mm-hmm. and and can win the fight that way. Just chipping away, piecing him up with unorthodox strikes, avoiding big shots. Yeah. Mm. You've convinced me, Rob. I, I will say for me as well that Pereira is going to win this weekend. Let's see. It's going to be a very, very exciting fight. But you know what also is going to be a very interesting fight? Next up, we've got Gilbert Burns against Jorge Masvidal. All right, this is a very right. interesting matchup, right? What, what what do you think about this one? I'm keen to hear. Mate, it's – Masvidal's in a funny position. He is. I think in, in his career because mm-hmm. I think he's 38 now. Yeah. He, he hasn't. Yeah, he hasn't had a lot of success with like the top five at no. the moment. I feel like he hasn't he hasn't really 
had a lot of success with the top five in in his in, throughout his career. I'm going to no. say, and, and granted, he's he's beaten a lot of good names, but yeah, I I think there's a, a I don't know. I don't want to say ceiling, especially, but then at age 38. Man, you he know, said, it's, it's, I will it's... say, he just said the other day that if he loses this fight, I mean, that's pretty much it for him. And and, and I yeah, think- he hangs it up. You, you, ha- you have to. You have to. Because at the very least, it's, it's the end of his kind of run as a, as a top card contender in that division. Um, but he, he said himself that he's probably going to hang up the boots. And I, I don't see him winning this. Honestly, I don't. Yeah. I think this is a hard fight for him. I think- Leon Edwards is a better fight for him than Gilbert Burns. Yeah. If Masvidal could have skipped Burns somehow, <laughs> <laughs> and skipped Burns somehow and fought for the title, yep. we may have seen a new champion because I think that's a good matchup. Mm. I think Masvidal is like scrappy street fighter mm. striking mm. in mix against Edwards' fight. It's a much better fight for him. Burns, oh, that's tough because – you know Burns, the takedown, the threat of the takedown is always there. And once yeah. you go to the ground, the ground is dangerous. Like yeah. Burns' MMA jiu-jitsu is phenomenal, phenomenal, mm-hmm. okay? Like really, really high caliber. Yeah. But as soon as you start devoting too much attention on on that ground, on, the, on avoiding those takedowns, he starts loading up on those hands. You know, he mm. uses those heavy cement block hands to get in and push you up against the fence and then take you to where he wants it to be. You saw him in the fight against Chemayev. He's got rocks in his hands. He, he <laughs> Chemayev, Chemayev is a tough dude. He's got chin. Everyone's seen it. And yeah. he, like on, on Chemayev, who hasn't been in a lot of scrappy fights, he hasn't been in a lot of fights that have worn him out. Yeah. For Burns to inflict that much damage on him that in brutal. that fight, yeah. Yeah, like it it may like props to Burns. But yeah, I I I think Burns is a hard fight for Masvidal. For sure. But Burns has been hurt. We saw him in the Usman fight. We've seen him in, in the Chimaya fight. He gets hurt. Yep. If Masvidal fights smart, he he can he can beat him. But you know, if you want my prediction, I'm I will I will have to say Burns. I think for sure the, the looks of the looks of heavy hands and wrestling yeah. over three rounds. Yeah. You know, Burns is a bit of a powerhouse. Three rounds, he's a bit of a terror. Yeah, I mean, and, and I think Masvidal. I mean, we saw Masvidal struggle against Usman and Covington for for a similar reason. Like it's the wrestling that he really struggles with. If he can somehow stand up and trade blows and, and utilize his boxing and his striking, maybe maybe he has a chance. But I just can't see Burns going down that route. Yeah, and like I don't see Burns gassing, you know. No. And you see Masvidal like, gassing, oh, easy, easy. Over over three rounds, I don't see Burns gassing. I see him just like like exploding into the pocket, throwing heavy leather, yeah. and um and and trying to land a takedown. You know, we may see we may see because Masvidal loves those body kicks. He loves throwing those body kicks. We may see him get hurt with those or walk into them. But throwing body kicks against a wrestler, someone who wants to take down, is always a dangerous prospect. For you sure. Know, you, don't want to, you don't want to give them any of your body parts if you don't have to. <laughs> Absolutely. So I think we're both going with Gilbert Burns on this one to win this weekend. And if he does, I mean, I think that might be it for Masvidal mm. in the UFC. Yeah. But moving but, on. Yeah, go on. Yeah, but hold on. But let, let's, let's just say yeah. he beats Burns somehow. Okay? He beats we should him cover in some that. way, some yeah. fashion. He moves... He moves on to fight Leon Edwards, okay? We may very well see a 39, 40-year-old Masvidal as champion. I just you know that it. Oh, it's a hard path. It's a very hard path. But that it, it it's there. It's not not there, <laughs> you know? Who knows? Maybe Masvidal comes out of the gate with another flying knee and just starches burn in impressive fashion, sits out against Colby yep. and, um, and Edwards and yeah. – yeah, because I, I do believe Colby's going to fight Edwards. Well, I can't pic- see picture them. this, Rob, all right? Somehow, Masvidal wins this weekend. Then mm. you have Colby beating, beating Leon Edwards. And because he's someone oh, yeah. that literally just became the champ, there's probably no kind of – it doesn't make sense for him to get the immediate rematch. Then you have <laughs> Covington and Masvidal for the title, <laughs> a rematch, even though Masvidal lost pretty convincingly against the last fight. That could be Col- a very interesting one to see. Colby and Edwards haven't been called yet, though. I can see if George comes out, mm. guns blazing, flying knees him, nah. and then I can see them 
giving Masvidal to Leon Edwards first. Nah, man. Dana sold on. For whatever reason, yeah, I don't but understand it. Think like about, business, I get it, but yeah. Think about how much traction that three-piece and soda. You, do you remember? <laughs> the three-piece and soda yeah. in the back room with Ed- Edwards. Like That's a fight people have been wanting to see forever. Sure. So I, And that's a story. That's a story. Like I said, 38-year-old Masvidal yep. um, making a run at the title, having another title shot. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll see what happens. It's going to be interesting, but I still think you and I, Rob, both think that Burns is going to be winning this weekend. But yeah. who knows? Yeah. Next up, we've got Kevin Holland, and I know I'm going to butcher this yeah. one. Santiago Ponzinbio, I think is how you say it. Um, in another interesting fight as well. Ponzinbio, very interesting fight. <laughs> welterweight division. I would I would never get that last name pronunciation right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Never. Ponzinibio. It's like you and who, who, who did you struggle with the other day? It was um, I struggle with everyone. Like, no, no, no. It I was so with Pereira. Um, it's not actually Pereira, is it? It's it's oh, uh, Do- Dolize. Yeah. Or did, or did no, 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 no. You, right. got you got it right. You got uh, Dolize right. It was. I don't know why I remember Ponzinibbio. Ponzinibbio. I just feel like I've heard it about. a couple times. Fair, fair. I feel like I've heard it somewhere. I don't know. Maybe go- maybe he works down the road. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just going to call him Santi. So Santi yeah. against Holland, right? Yeah. Exciting yeah. fight, so, man. Yeah. In terms of main card fights, this is this is one I'm I'm also interested in. Okay. Yeah. It's Kevin Holland. What can you say about him? Like he's been he's been done dirty a couple of times. What what is his record in his uh, last? So his record overall twenty three and nine, right? But he's coming off uh, two wins, three losses in all, in his last five fights. In his last five fights, because I know he, well, he lost to Wonder Boy. Mm. Okay, then he lost he lost to Chamayev, and he was he was done dirty with Chamayev. Okay, because <laughs> he the the fights previously he had just been absolutely wrestle mauled, like yeah, like proper backpacked and just laid down with a meat blanket on, and then they <laughs> they, they give him they give him Chamayev oh. who didn't make weight, who he wasn't supposed to fight. <laughs> that was that was not that was I could go on about that. Like, that was not fair. They're, they're just like psych. <laughs> Not fair whatsoever. Oh, that was that was that was great. Nah, that was great. Nah. And then <laughs> poor dude. And and then and then the fight after they give one of the most elusive strikers in the entire world, <laughs> like one of the hardest dudes to hit. Period. <laughs> like, oh, dude, that's great. <laughs> I love how much you're loving this. (laughs) Yeah, well, because he's well, because he's he kind of asks for it. He's a loud mouth. He is, and he knows he is. Yeah, he just um, he just he doesn't shut up. He's always taking fights, and credit to him, he's always jumping in the fights, guns blazing. He's always happy to take a fight on short notice, happy to throw down. But man, he's been he's had a. He's had he's had a, a rocky road. He he has walked under some stick uh, under some ladders. He is, <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> but in saying that, in saying that though, I think this fight is a redemption fight for him. I think this is like the UFC were like, okay, here's your redemption arc start. Let's see what you can okay. do because I think Santiago Ponzinibbio. Okay, I smashed that. That was great. God. You say I that think, so good. It's yeah, mate, go I. I'm not taking anything away from him. He's, he's he's just come off a win. He's a heavy hitting dude. Yeah. I just think Kevin Holland can fight this fight. He's he's not fighting a top five opponent. He's not fighting a guy that likes to take people down, and just hold him down forever. He's fighting yeah. a guy that will fight him. And I think Kevin Holland has the advantage in that sort of fight. In this fight in particular, I think we could see the redemption arc of Kevin Holland start this weekend. Could see is that your is that your official prediction, Rob? <laughs> it is. I got Kevin. I got Kevin Holland winning because people forget. But on his way up through the ladders and rankings of of the middleweight division, he was starching people. Man, he yeah. was starching people. It wasn't. It was just. It wasn't until people realized that he he's like a turtle on his back if he if he gets pushed there, <laughs> like, and then people just started taking him down. <laughs> Fair, but you don't you don't mm. think Ponzinibbio is? Oh, now I'm nailing it. You don't think his 
knockout power and, and, and his striking can have any factor in this fight? Because I know most people are seeing him, or they're tipping him to lose, but you don't think that can come into it at all? Oh, it's always a factor. Everybody's Every fight's got to punch his chance, right? But yeah. I, I mean, I that's think the majority him, of his I, wins. I, I rate Holland's striking. Yeah. Like, even in the Wonder Boy fight when he broke his hand and then started how that played out and, and how the fight played out once he broke his hand is how yeah. it is. But he yeah. did hurt Wonder Boy in that mm. fight. Mm. He did hurt him. Holland has some power in his hands. He's very creative, very crafty, and he's huge, dude. He's like 6'4". He's got yeah. massive reach, massive reach. And I think, yeah, I think he controls a fight with Santiago. I think, I think he can kind of take the fight any which way. I, I do believe he's got the striking superiority, and I think he wins. I think this is where we see right. his redemption arc. Like I let's said, say- I love a redemption arc. Hundred percent. So oh, let's say Holland well, for the win. Not not in middleweight. I hate when <laughs> dudes get redemption arcs in middleweight. <laughs> stop! Like, stop I was like, bringing oh, it up, got bro. Like, stop like bringing Bronson, it up, bro. Bro- Bronson's had about seven redemption arcs. Like, <laughs> <laughs> are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> he goes on a skid and then <laughs> smashes people back to back to back, and he's like, oh, the next champ, yep. and then he starts going on a skid again. Like, he's had about nine redemption arcs. Even his yeah, last so fight, did, he was so winning. So has Goku and Dragon Ball Z, Rob. It's it's a thing. It's yeah. absolutely a thing. <laughs> it is a thing, but this is this is real life. <laughs> like he's uh, he's true. real lifing this. <laughs> uh, so let's uh, go Holland with the win. Do you, do you have anything yeah. else to say about UFC two eight seven? We haven't covered all of main card because we've got we a haven't covered all show. the main card. Yeah, and we have Raul Rosas Jr., the youngest UFC fighter to. To, to exist. 18 you know, years I, old. Jeez. Yeah. I, I was lucky to speak to him today on Fight Week. And, um, nice. Yeah, he's looking fly. He's uh, he's very ready for this weekend. He wants to get in there against Christian Rodriguez. Yep. But Rob Font and Adrian Yanez. Oh, man. Adrian Yanez is such a hard fight for Font. Like, Yanez is, is it's tearing just, it, it up yeah, right now. 100%. Like, <laughs> what's the opposite of a redemption arc? <laughs> I feel like <laughs> someone, someone there has stumbled into that one. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but you've got to say, but, though, Font's probably Giannis's hardest fight in the UFC. I know he's you know undefeated so far in the UFC. Definitely, but, definitely. Yeah. But I think, I think that's an element people should be aware of is that like these guys that get into the UFC and start tearing it up to get to these hard fights, these top five fights, top ten fights, within yeah. the span of, let's say, four fights – Mm. Have they've taken significantly less damage than the dudes that have to take ten fights to get to the top sure. five? Okay, obviously the experience gain is different. Is different, but the 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 striking punishment, like the the head trauma, is yeah. much much less. You know, and like just to go on the Gilbert Burns when he fought Chimaev, I think if I think. If we saw a Chimaev that had been in the UFC for three more years or had three more mm. fights under his belt before fighting that Burns, I don't think Chimaev gets out of that fight. I think yeah. his head just with that much, little bit more trauma, like he, he Burns puts him out of there because he hurt Chimaev. And Ch- Chimaev, I think that was like the first time Chimaev has been hit. Like, yeah. In his I mean, fight. seriously, like, um, yeah, yeah. Like, actually, I think it was like yeah. one of the few fights in the UFC he's, he had been hit. So mm. I, that's a thing. But, yeah, they're, they're, they're some of the bigger fights that I'm interested in UFC 287. What a packed card. What a stacked card for Sunday. Very excited to be watching it on Sunday, at least Aussie time Sunday, Saturday mm-hmm. if you're in the US and elsewhere in the world. But mm-hmm. moving mm-hmm. on now, we've I say gaming news, but this is still – MMA stuff, but it's very, very it interesting. Is, is. So, one uh, of the biggest pieces before, of news from the go on, Rob. Yeah. Uh, before, before we time off UFC, which we're kind of not doing with the first part. Yeah, of I was going to say <laughs> anyway. I, I, I am on the UFC podcast with um, uh, Jens Pulver on Sunday, watching, watching the. It's like a reaction feed. Oh, live nice. Watching two eight seven. So, if you're interested, everybody, you can tune into that. And on the back of that, we are looking to do something like that in the future for the bigger cards as well. Let us know in the comments below if you are interested in doing a bit of a, a live feed reactions, talk about which way. And uh, yeah, I'm sure it's something we could that, do, man. don't you think? No, it, no, it's so, so super easy to set up. Like, we'll, hunt, People have been asking us in the comments as well about mm. whether we're going to be doing a live show. Easy. Easy to do. So. Yeah. 
Easy. Maybe maybe for like, you know, another big card down the line, we'll, we'll yeah. 100% we'll tee it up. Definitely. Not this one, but yeah. a big one coming up. Let us know what card you guys are interested in and yeah. if you are uh, interested in this. And yeah, and we'll, we'll, we'll suss it out. All righty. So moving on to that news, right, we have on. the news that broke. UFC and WWE are effectively, I'll say merging, but it's very, very unclear mm. as to what that actually means. So Endeavor Holdings, mm. parent company of the UFC, announced that they're effectively acquiring the WWE. The WWE had been looking to sell for a very long time. There was a Saudi bid in there. There was a few other talks, but it, ultimately it was Endeavor. But Endeavor, instead of just saying, yeah, we've acquired the WWE, we're going to have WWE and UFC, they pretty much said that they're forming a new company that's combining both brands mm. in a way. So Endeavor is going to be holding 51% of the shares after WWE shareholders will have 49%. Endeavor is going to have one more board member. So Endeavor has more of the control in that regard, but you're still going to have Vince McMahon involved as an executive chairman. <laughs> and he's like, I'll talk about this in a second. He's going to be much more involved in WWE now, it seems. You're going to have Endeavor's CEO being uh, still the CEO of, of the combined venture now. Dana White's still doing his thing. Nick Khan's still doing his thing, both as president of their respective brands. And this is what uh, Endeavor's CEO said. This is a rare opportunity to create a global live sports and entertainment pure play built for where the industry is headed. For decades, Vince and his team have demonstrated an incredible track record of innovation and shareholder value creation. And we are confident that Endeavor can deliver significant additional value for shareholders by bringing UFC and WWE together. Rob, what do you think of this, man? <laughs> it's just insane to me. Oh, mate, it is it is a huge move. It is a yep. huge play. Um, oh, UFC is would have to be, they'd have to be the marketing kings of the sports world right now. I think. Yeah. Okay. For Obviously, sure. there are some there are longer term, and like reputed sports, like, like several around the world, like heaps of them. But for the time span that UFC have been on this, like in the market, yeah, and for the rate at which it has exploded mm. to the point where it's 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 a majority shareholder with the WWE, which is monstrous, monstrous, you know, yeah, um, yeah, it's it's amazing to see, and I think bringing those two brand labels together can only make each other bigger and better because the WWE itself has had like huge amounts of brand coverage and marketing sure. over the years. Every, everybody and their friend knows of what, what wrestling is, knows what WWE is, knows who sure. Steve Austin is, knows who Goldberg is. They, like, yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, I'm sure you grew up pretending to be wrestlers or playing the video games. And Batista, man. Did. He was my man. <laughs> Really? Batista? Dave Batista and Eddie my... Guerrero. Oh. Oh, Eddie Guerrero was like something Eddie else, Guerrero. man. He was yeah. so good. I don't, my f there we go. Is that a focus? Um, I liked Jeff Hardy. Oh, I Jeff, Hardy Jeff Hardy. Is, and then, so good. Yeah. That, those then, were the golden triple, era, man. Triple H, what, triple H yeah. when he came back from his knee injury. Not when yep. he, he got a bit weird later on. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, he, he, didn't get, he didn't get weird. He went the evil arc. <laughs> he did. But that's, yeah, I think, when, yeah. when Triple H is, is, is his best, yeah. when he's doing that evil arc. But I will, I will right. say this. I think this merger, whatever you want to call it, actually has huge positivity and implications for UFC in particular. Because imagine the names of getting a UFC fighter, and Conor McGregor is probably the one that's going to do it first because he already has an existing relationship with the WWE. But it, just imagine you get a UFC fighter, put him in a card or some sort of event, um, some sort of storyline in the WWE. The amount of new eyeballs you get on that fighter and then they go back and they're, and they're fighting in another UFC main card, it brings eyes from the WWE to the UFC. And I think that's a big reason why they're doing this. Definitely. It's... It's merging two massive fan bases. Yeah. Like, yeah. Because they don't, like, yeah, it's like a I, Venn diagram. Like, they're not the same, but they do cross over, but there's huge potential of getting both on either side. Definitely, definitely. And I was just about to say that they, generally, typically, you don't see the, the wrestling fans watching UFC and no. vice versa. So no. to, 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 to see them merge the way they're going to be is, yeah. like I said, I can, it can only be a good thing for both companies. Yeah. And uh, I cannot wait to see which direction you know this takes us 
what I'm most excited for, because I was following closely, like when Brock Lesnar did his move and to a lesser extent, CM Punk did his move to, to UFC. I'm excited because it's coming for which WWE fighter decides to take that plunge and says, you know what? I'm going to do it. And and you know what? The, Matt Riddle's already done the whole UFC thing. He's, he went the other way. Um, maybe you see Matt Riddle back in the in the so, UFC, eh? Hey? <laughs> oh, what about Brock Lesnar? And yeah, I, I for, for sure. Can, you, right, can, I, can I ask you this, Rob? Like, became UFC champion. Yeah. But do you wow. think- Like, in like three fights, another one. Yeah. But do you think Brock would actually stand a chance against John Jones? Because that's the fight. That's the fight to me. Oh, I gotta say, it's no. hard to say. Probably not. Yeah, probably not. But, that, but <laughs> probably what else not. do you do? Like that's because, the thing. Ah, <clears throat> uh, what, what can you do? What can you do? Like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I think it's hard to say because I don't know. Uh, what is it? Uh, I think no, you started Brock. Maybe <laughs> I think you started Brock. Nah, not a hope in hell. Yeah, yeah. Because like. No, no, you started Brock was massive. Yeah, like those little hammer fist knockouts he was getting on people. Yeah, like th- th- he was lifting his hand this much and landing it on people's heads and knocking him out. It was yeah nuts. I remember when the the UFC game when he came as a playable character in the UFC game. Yeah, all I would do is just take people down and just hammer fist and win like all the time. He's a scary. He was dude. unstoppable. He's such a scary, scary dude. dude, honestly. But massive it's, unit. Have you yeah. seen him high school wrestle and stuff? He's yeah. huge. He was always huge. Freak. Like he was like athlete. seventeen year old in in those videos of him doing high school wrestling, and he was just yeah. manhand like he just looked like a full grown yeah, twenty five year old. It was insane. He, he he was he was mega. I don't know if you guys can hear my kids in the background. They're trying to break in my door. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know on on the t- on the back of that though, on fight week today we did and on my my social week or MMA, <laughs> I did. We did a little. We did a little skit <laughs> with with with, um, uh, with with Hulk Hogan and Steve Austin, and uh, uh, that was something. You should. <laughs> you guys should uh, should have a look at my socials. I saw that man at Fight Weekend. Oh, uh, it was it was exciting yeah, seeing was, Hulk uh, Hogan on Aussie TV. <laughs> mate, to and think, the rattlesnake. To, to think. To, th- to think Hulk Hogan would come on Fight Week. You know, it was just unreal. Oh. So. Insane. Yeah, have, give it a gaze on my socials or on Fight Week. Absolutely. But that was big news. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens. And of course, with things like this, it's not approved yet. They have to go through the whole rigmarole of getting it approved through government bodies. But eventually, that's the intention. So moving on now, some a couple of interesting pieces of news. Rob, I got to ask, first of all, do you do you know of the you know of the Steam Deck? Did you end up getting one? Have you like done a great export no, of I it? Didn't, no, I didn't, but I want to so bad. Yeah. So bad because um, a lot of the games that I play yep. are like 2D indie games. Yeah. So they're, they're not high processing anyway. Mm. So I just – I want I want one so bad and I want it to come to Australia now. Well, here's the thing. You might, you might get lucky but with an alternative Steam Deck competitor. So first of all, I'll talk about the ROG Ally, which is the closest one to the Steam Deck. So – uh, ROG Ally has been announced. It's going to feature a custom AMD chip. It's going to be able to stream gameplay to a TV, kind not quite like the Nintendo Switch, but similar in a way. It's going to run on Windows 11. It's going to be compatible with Xbox Game Pass. And the one-up that it's got over the Steam Deck is that it's going to have a 1080p screen running at 120 hertz. So obviously the Steam Deck has been a huge success, but it has some downsides. Number one, it's not in every country. We still don't have it here in Australia. You have to import it through Kogan and other third parties. The battery life is a little bit of a, a deal breaker for some people. And the low resolution screen, it's effectively a, a 720p or like 1200, 1200 by 800 screen. So a little bit lower resolution than what the ROG Ally would be. So if this can come to the market and they release products here all the time, it could be a decent competitor to the Steam Deck. I, I think the the selling price will be a major factor yeah. in, in this in this argument because I I can't imagine people who want a Steam Deck uh, Steam Deck settling for a ROG Ally in any for sure. capacity yeah. other than price. Yeah. Like really. Because Steam and that's I guess that's the the big selling like the, the, the big um chip on Steam's shoulder mm. is that they come out first. Yeah. And that's always the case with a lot of these, yeah. you know, mega tech companies. 
Plus as well, the big thing that Steam has got is that a lot of developers are really taking it seriously now, and you'll see a lot of new releases be Steam Deck optimized. Is that going to have to be another thing that developers do with the ROG Ally, let alone any mm. other Steam Deck alternative that comes out? Because if Steam Deck has the market share, most games are probably going to be optimized just for that handheld and no others. Yeah. And is, is Steam going to be compatible with ROG Ally? I assume so. If it's like, running Windows 11, I would assume like, that Steam works yeah. on there. So maybe there is a way if a game has been Steam Deck... Op- and they're probably going to build the ROG Ally knowing this, but if a game has been Steam Deck optimized, maybe it somehow automatically becomes optimized for the mm-hmm. ROG Ally. But it's not always yeah. as easy as, you know, sometimes, sometimes people make it out to be. Yeah, well, and like that's why I wanted the Steam Deck, though, is because yeah. it's Steam. Like that's where my games are, yeah. and and we could we can jump on the back of this about you know um, companies that have their own client. Yes, <laughs> that's not Steam. bro. Just just go on Steam. Go on Steam. Steam is so good. We're gonna so good. We're, he's, he, Rob is hinting about the the next topic that we're gonna be talking about. But in addition right. to to that as well, Rob, we've also got uh, <laughs> this. So this leak literally came out ten minutes before we started this episode. Insider <clears throat> Gaming has had an exclu- they call it an exclusive leak, but there is a PlayStation handheld in development as well. It's codenamed Q Light. And Insider Gaming reports that it's going to support adaptive streaming up to 1080p, 60 frames per, se- per, uh, per second. The new device, though, will require constant connectivity to the internet. And effectively, you're going to need a PlayStation 5 with it. It looks like a PlayStation 5 controller, but it's going to have a big screen in the middle. It's going to support adaptive triggers. It has all the other you know things that you would expect in a handheld. Um, it's currently in the QA phase, and it's scheduled to release. This is what they said. Before the PlayStation 4, for, sorry, PlayStation 5 Pro and after the detachable disk drive PlayStation 5 that you and I talked about in another episode, Rob. So PlayStation's mm. coming out with their own thing, but this one seems a little bit... It's not convincing me. Um, is this... So does the PlayStation 5 need to be on for you to be able to... to like, are you, are you more or less streaming your game? It's, it kind of sounds like it. If you need... Because... Yeah. Yeah, because because if if they are streaming their game yeah. like uh, like what Steam does now, yeah. where you can turn your computer on and then go play on your laptop Correct. or something like that. If if it's the same, yeah. then bro, use Steam. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> it, it it just seems I don't know who yeah. this is trying to convince because if people maybe as you said, Rob, it comes down to price. Maybe this thing is so relatively cheap that people are going to be like, you know what, I'll pick it up even if it's. It means I always have to have my PlayStation 5 on and have a remote play on. We still don't quite know how it's actually going to work, but needing mm-hmm. a constant connectivity to the internet, to, for me, is a bit of a deal breaker. Yeah, well, let alone like it, it, having a screen on your handheld, you're like, what's the battery life going to be on that thing? Yeah. Like, controllers aren't great. That's the problem <laughs> you know, with the Steam Deck. You're gonna, yeah. 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 Well, almost anything that requires connectivity, I find, yeah. is a pretty heavy battery drain. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess there's too many unknowns. But can I just say that, like the the, the scientists, like at Sony, at Sony, yeah. the, the guy that the new guy, obviously that they've brought in, <laughs> and they've said, "Mate, what can we do for for, for some extra scratch? You know, what can we do for a bit of extra coin around here?" He goes, yeah. "He goes, well, what if we sold the PlayStation in five different parts?" <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, "Yes, do it now! I want to see it tomorrow." That's kind of okay, what they're why doing. Are we doing that? You're right. Why are we? Why, why are we? Why are we selling multiple bits of the same thing? Yeah. And I, and I'll say <laughs> as well. Turning into Apple. Th- so they have the the PlayStation. V- VR2 that came out and it's actually not selling all that well. They, they're saying the sales on that thing is pretty low. They came out with it with a big song and dance, but I think VR is just it's it's it has had its heyday if you if you would consider it, but it's just not going to be as successful as I think people want it to mm. be or think it will be. But yeah, you're right. They're kind of just yeah. selling all these I, different things. I think it's fun for what it is, but uh, I get motion sick when I play VR. That's hey, the problem. Like I, I I got my son. Uh, what is it? Uh, Ocu- Oculus? Oculus, yeah. Rift, yeah. Yeah, I got him one of those. Yeah, and yeah, like it's fun. Yeah. Like, oh, what is it? It's called Blade and Sorcery. Yeah, and like you're just torching people and killing people. <laughs> it's pretty full <laughs> on, but it's fun. It is fun. It's fun. But I get terribly motion sick in it. Terribly. And many people do do as well. I just I can't imagine myself sitting in a 
freaking VR thing for hours on end, sweating. It just it doesn't seem comfortable to me. I just want to sit down, yeah. relax, and look at a screen, yeah. honestly. That's it. But moving That's on it. to the last exactly games that. news that we have for today, Rob's already is already heated about this. So Ubisoft is working mm-hmm. on a brand new updated game client for Ubisoft Connect, and it's kind of called Ubisoft Connect 2.0 right now, but we don't know whether it's going to keep that name. Looks very mm. similar to the Epic Game Store, according to the leaks. It's got a reworked homepage, game mm. library, and login screen pages. It's currently undergoing a beta stress test with a few amount of people. Rob, why don't you like having another games client? Go on, <laughs> tell me. <laughs> Mate, don't, don't, don't direct it like it's just me. It's you two. It's, it's everyone. everybody else I know, there. I feel the same. Any, anybody that makes me download a browser that isn't Steam, I get upset with. <laughs> and I do understand. Obviously, they don't. Like Steam takes a huge chunk out of yep. the sales yep. for, for for being on Steam, yep. but for a reason. Like it's Steam, everyone gets yeah. it. It runs so well. Like, yep. yeah, it it it's 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 a great platform. It's a great platform. Ubi, Ubisoft two point What happened to one point Like, <laughs> what happened to the first one? It I wasn't good. It's going to be like Epic Store. Epic Store is not good. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you know, all any. Any browser, any third, um, not third party, any, 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 what is it? What's it called? Client, any game client that isn't Steam, I have have been happy with. And just a heads up: if you're one of the games on Steam <laughs> that, I, that that I click on, and you tell me I have to download this private browser yep. or thing for it, yep. I delete you straight away. <laughs> like. You annoy me. <laughs> don't do that to me. Don't don't make me it's jump fair. through hoops. Yeah. I I am just a simple man. And we and we saw other companies like taking Bethesda, right? We talk about them a lot. They had their own launcher, and then eventually they pretty much reverted back where game like Fallout 76, yeah. they had their own launcher, and now you play it on Steam. I wonder when mm-hmm. Ubisoft is going to do that. They've just gone through redundancies as well, like many other games and tech companies. Do they even have the staff to support their own games client? And, and build up it, it mm. takes so much work to build up an, another community there when you're already having Steam I know they take 30% of the money but just they're sitting there with a huge audience just have your games on there in my opinion as well mate like Steam is unreal yeah it really is yeah. it is and it's just such a clean platform yeah. it is so easy to use just works the cloud yeah. the cloud is beautiful yeah. the 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 workshop, the Steam workshop mm-hmm. for modding games is clean. Yep. Like it is just, you know, hats off to Steam. I, I agree, <laughs> Rob. So let's see what's going to be happening with Ubisoft's new upgraded games client. But the mm. next segment, what we are watching slash playing, Rob, mm, mm, hit it. Mm. What, what, what are you playing at the moment? You tell me what you're watching. Quickly. Mate, I'm watching. Because I just got to scroll up. I don't know whether you would consider this a, a mainstream anime, but I am watching <clears throat> Vinland Saga. Uh, on Finland Vin- Saga. Vinland Saga with a V. Vinland. Oh, yeah, the Viking about the angry kid. Have you watched it? <laughs> yeah. Completely? <laughs> a kid. <laughs> Kid's too angry. He's so angry. But that's He's the story. Weird. That's the that's the whole story. I know, but I don't want to watch twenty. I don't want to watch twenty something episodes of him having a fit. Yeah, but eventually he's gonna. Oh, I haven't gotten to the point yet where he clearly does the thing, but eventually he'll get over it. <laughs> I don't know what thing you're talking about. No, it is. I don't want to spoil he, it for people. He, he's just a very upset kid, and I didn't like how sometimes the. I don't like it when. Animes yeah. or books or TV shows yeah. or things stray off the main character. I hate having more than one main character. I really struggle with like books that that don't that have more than main one main character. Yeah. It's very hard for me to stay on. Like Fair. the characters have to be so well written that I stick with it. But Finland Saga, yeah, I, you know that came out when like Vikings was a big thing. When that's when exactly why Netflix I love it. was dropping. That's right. Yeah, when Vo- Netflix was dropping eight Viking shows a day, like, oh. <laughs> like you know, when that was like a the fad, Last a Kingdom famous. Viking. There's so many of them, but oh. Vikings was so good. Oh. oh, Vikings is unreal, absolutely unreal. Ragnar, you know, I'm, I'm mates with. Uh, I know. Oh, Ragnar, yeah. I'm I'm mates with Travis Flimmel. The who's Ragnar? He's a he's a Rob, top. We bloke. need to get him as a guest you know? on this podcast. Okay, is he is he an MMA Mate, fan? He, he, he is, he is, and he's actually he's brought up out a beer. He's an Australian. He, he brought out a beer called Traveller. It's a yeah. great light beer. Yeah. Right you. Anybody's interested? Suss on. He's that. a Canberra Raider supporter, yeah. like like Johnny, like me. 
<laughs> yeah, but because he's so cool, I don't judge him. So no, I mean, we're, we're so bad this season. I don't want to. I don't know. I was going to wear the jersey, and I thought I don't want to get ragged on the podcast. But yeah, yeah. so Wait, Canberra's a city. Uh, Canberra's a city. Everyone forgets there. <laughs> like, I know. <laughs> until there's something going on at the, at the at the Institute of Sport. I tell you what, though, <laughs> I, we're doing. Good. I don't know if you watch rugby, Super Rugby, but Brumbies are doing pretty well. So like, we always at least have one good team going on all at right. any one time. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I'll give it to you. But yeah, so, I, um, I'm watching Vinland Saga. Vinland Saga is not bad. Like it's a, it's a good one. Yeah, it's a good one. It's up there. What about you, man? Um, I yeah. <laughs> I laugh because I know it's shit. The, the, the one I'm watching is crap. So I, I like – if the suggestions I've made, people have probably worked it out by now. I like romance animes yeah. a lot of the time. Yeah, I like yeah. those harem ones. They're sick. One dude, 19 wives. Why not? You know? <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I uh, watched A Couple of Cuckoos, it's called. A Couple <clears throat> of Cuckoos? Yeah. Oh, a Couple of Cuckoos. Is it about um, exactly like the, the, what I think it's about by that name? No, it's, it, it's it's like kids get swapped at birth, grow up different families. Okay, ah, then they right. meet their real families, okay. and there's a romance that happens through the mix of it. Right, and I was different. I was somewhere and, else in what, my mind with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. get your mind out of the gutter, mate. <laughs> oh, come on. Um, now, now this is a what we're watching. I watched it, but I'm going to tell everybody out there: don't. Don't waste your time because it strung me along for 20 something episodes and gave and got nowhere. Oh, <laughs> it man. got me absolutely nowhere. And I remember scrolling in the comments after that, the last episode at 23 or something, and everyone is like, wow, uh, 21 episodes to get this. Like, what a waste they, of time. They did, they did me dirty. If you want to laugh, like, it's worth It's not a bad one. Like, watch it, but then you'll see, you'll, You'll see what I mean. You read the comments at the end, uh, at the, the last episode, and it is, it's, yeah, it's a doozy. It's <laughs> absolutely brilliant. I'm not going to watch it then. That, that, you've, you've just given the worst review of that show ever. <laughs> it's, no an, it's an honest review. They, you, they strung me along, and I and I took it. I, I Yeah, I went with it for too long. Honestly, Rob, too that's, long. That's, 20 episodes too long. That's why I watch Mates from Anime because like, you, you've got people backing it up. You know what you're going to get. You know that it's going to turn out all right in the end. You watch some random one you haven't heard of. You just don't know where it's going to go. Oh, but you, then you ask me who's watched all the random ones and I'll just tell you. All right, fine. Like, if I see some random one on Crunchyroll, I'll message you. <laughs> there is some anime, brother, that is like art. It is unreal. Like there is a an anime called You Lie in April and everyone who's watched it knows it is it is so good. Like yeah. it's an anime that makes you feel stuff, makes you tingly. <laughs> <laughs> Adding it to the list. <laughs> yeah. So, you, last so up, what are you playing? I mean, what am I playing? I'm I'm trying to finish yeah. God of War Ragnarok. I just I've I don't know Have what it is. That's a forever game. You it's don't finish a, that, Rob. Man, it it happened. The same thing happened with the first God of War, ga- War game, where I ended up finishing it. But for some reason, God of War games, they just I play it and then I drop it for weeks and then I play it and then I drop it for mm. weeks. It took me well over a year to finish the first God of War game and it's going to happen again with Ragnarok. And I mean, look, look, look what I have in the background. That's that's <clears throat> Thor's hammer right there. I got the collector's <laughs> edition. I love the game, Every- but for some reason it takes forever for me to finish it. I don't know. Everybody I know says the same thing. Like, yeah. I ask them what they're playing, like, still, still Ragnarok. Still Ragnarok. Still Ragnarok. <laughs> like, for years. <laughs> I don't know what you it know, is so. about the game. It just, it, it's, in, don't get me wrong, it's interesting and it's intriguing and I will finish it, but I just don't have that urge to go away and play Ragnarok. So I'll play it for like a couple of hours. I'm like, nah, I'm good for a couple of weeks. It's mm. weird, man. I don't know. What about you? Mm. Mm. Well, I wish you all the best in that. <laughs> I, uh, I'm playing Pathfinder: Wrath of the Righteous again. Oh yeah, yeah. Fair. And uh, I'm playing, I'm playing on core difficulty solo as a caster. And um, you won't understand what that is, and no. 99 of the viewers won't understand what that is. But the one percent that do, if I was to guess, that I am just can, can I get can I guess you are you are intentionally yeah, yeah, hurting yeah, yeah, yourself yeah. because you're a maniac. Oh, I am suffering. I am suffering. I, <laughs> I sit right. here for three hours <laughs> just reloading the same fight, the same uh, fight, hoping that the dice rolls flukily in some way that helps me get a win and then I can quick save and then move forward. Like it is it is punishing, it. absolutely punishing. And before people say, oh, get Witch of the Veil 2 and blah, blah. No, I don't want to do that. I'm going 
pure kineticist, try my best, get, yeah, I'm in a lot of pain. You're a sucker no, for punishment, man. I love it. <laughs> Genuinely. Love it. Makes me feel stuff. <laughs> the last segment we got, fan questions. Thank you to everyone for leaving your questions in the YouTube comments. That's where we'll be sourcing them. So if you have a question you want to ask us for a future ep episode, mm. please let us know in the comments of this video. But first up, we, got, we have Rio Plata on YouTube asking, what game would you play if your life depended on on beating it on the hardest level. And like, I feel like this question, like you can't just say you'll die a bunch of times. Like maybe you have like a certain amount, let's say you had like five lives or 10 lives or something. Cause if you could just keep dying and eventually you'd beat it, then that doesn't really count. But Rob, if you had to beat a game and your life depended on it on very hard. And the hardest difficulty. Hardest difficulty. One life. One life or a limited amount of life relative to the game. It has to be fair to the game. What let, and even let's say it, like if it was Doom Eternal, you're playing it on the hardest, you couldn't die. What would that game be? Um, can you answer this first? Yeah, I can. It would. It would 100. <laughs> percent If if I had the training, if I'm allowed to train, if I had prep time like Batman, it would be Doom Eternal. I got fairly close to no, beating you'd it. You'd be dead. No, no, no. Oh, Rob, I, no. I I got really good at <laughs> it. I I. What, I, I can't say I got close to beating it. You know when you can't die at all, but you can pick up the extra lives on the. On, like, oh no, you can't. Fuck! I can't, it's been so long since I played it, but I got really good at it, and I got, no, I got kind of close. Dead. No, no, no. <laughs> that would be the game. Well, wait, what? What else would it be? Cuphead, maybe. I don't. I would say Doom Eternal. I think. I think. No, I'd, hell no. Hell yeah, no. Yeah, Cuphead's even harder. Well, what? Like, what would the game no. be? I forgot. Absolutely one life. And I, oh. and I feel like don't don't pick a cop out answer. That's like an easy game, even on the hardest difficulty. I feel like that kind of it goes against the the point of the question. Oh really? I oh, fine. Oh, Make okay, it an I've easy got two game. answers. My first my first one's going to be Skyrim. Yeah, of course. You talk, well, we talked I'm about alive, this the other brother. day. I'm living. I'm living. Like, <laughs> yeah, you're dead. You just, I'm living. You just I'll go stealth your archer. Even on a hard difficulty, you'll Mate, still get through 100%. Yeah. Easy. Nah. Easy. I go hard <laughs> again. That's why <laughs> watch, I said. What, 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 but watch me die to fall damage. And then <laughs> um, nah. My hard game. Hard game. Oh, Come on. Man. Make the question interesting. It depends. Like, It depends. Are we talking like hard, hard games? I like, would say, like, don't, don't go crazy. Because I'm, um, I'm a sucker for punishment. So I, I, I think I feel that my hard games are different to your hard games. Well, I, I would say, like, Elden Ring is a good example. Like, it wasn't as hard as Dark Souls games. I think that's a decent difficulty. I feel like that would be a good choice for this one. Mm. Could you go through? Like, there's people who have done mm. it all the time, gone through Elden Ring and not died. Yeah, and walking with no weapons. <laughs> like, it oh, can be done. Rob, there was a story I, I, that I, I wanted <laughs> to right. tell you about. Someone killed one of the bosses, like one of the hard bosses, starts with an M, I can't remember, without r dodging at all, without rolling, and on level one. It, like, I, I just don't Millennia? know. Millennia? Oh, no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll figure it out. Hold up. Morgoth. No, no, no. no Margoth. No. Elden. <laughs> you, I don't know. Are you just naming names? <laughs> Nothing. No, <laughs> Matt. <laughs> uh, um, no, oh, mate. If you if you want to see punishment, then I love watching this stuff. Is watch the guy beat the golden the golden knight as soon as you leave the tutorial area. Oh watch yeah, him yeah, beat yeah. that yeah. golden knight, yeah. punching only, punching <laughs> only, and so punch punches no matter what level you are, do five damage. Okay, and he punches Fire it out. only. Takes him something like four and a half hours. Four and a half hours of not getting hit. Un is, is unreal. The amount of punishment, like I love it. I love it knowing that there's ah, that's great. Nah, so okay, that's so a hard ridiculous. game that I had to win yeah. at the hardest difficulty. Yeah, probably, and and I could train. I'm gonna say, yeah. I'm gonna say Battle Brothers. I Battle think, Brothers. Um, wow. Yeah, I think that's. You ever played that game? No, I haven't. No, no, no. Okay. Um, I'm gonna that, search that, up now. That's a hard game. It is, it's brutal, but if you, but if you prepare right, right. and you're giving me time to start uh, to learn, you're yep. giving me time to prepare and train. Yep. There, there are mechanics you can use to 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 ease yourself into it. I think Battle Brothers. I, I'm walking away. Living. All right, all right. You know, assuming we don't we don't need to kill all the optional bosses. <laughs> Fair. So next question, we've got some guy on YouTube. What are your thoughts on the upcoming Fallout TV show? Are you excited? Rob, have you seen all the, the um, leaked images and stuff for the TV show? 
Uh, I I am I am what's the word? Trepidatious. Is that oh, the word? okay. Yeah. I don't I I don't know because like don't ruin. Please, please don't ruin Fallout for me. Look, I, I will say, man, that everything that I've seen from the set images to the people that they're getting on board for the directing to even the the actors like Walton Goggins playing a ghoul, for instance, everything that I've seen, they seem to be doing the games justice, genuinely. And it's also set out mm. in like the Midwest, so it's going to be kind of New Vegas area-ish. There's There's a lot of things going for it that I think it could actually be really really good so i am quietly confident on the tv show mm. I, I i i am sitting here hoping yeah okay i just yeah it is just such a such a close to home all right game space yep. universe that i i need it to be great i think it will be i, I we've seen some successes i mean the, the witcher obviously henry cavill's leaving that makes me really sad but i thought i thought the first season of witcher was was pretty good We've seen in other areas, uh, Cyberpunk, really? Edge Runners as an anime do well. I think this will do well. Yeah, the Witcher anime. I mean, the Witcher show. You didn't, right. you didn't like it? It was all right. I, know, I dropped it after a couple of episodes. Like, Fair. That's, Fair enough. I thought, I thought I it was all right. I like, thought it was all right. I know a lot of people liked it, but I just yeah. like, you can't, you can't make Geralt of Rivia human. <laughs> you can't portray that. You know what I mean? I th- there's there's I, no I, one that can portray that. If there was anyone, it was. <laughs> I thought Henry Cavill did a pretty good job. Like, what yeah, more could you? Yeah, but I could just for? see a dude wearing a wig. Yeah, like, and that's what we're gonna get with Liam Liam Hemsworth next. Unfortunately, have you? Uh, I don't want to talk about it. My anyway, all, whatever. Well, let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> next up, going from Garrett Hollowell, ask Rob. What anime opening he's choosing for his next walkout? So it doesn't have to be the actual one you're choosing, Rob, but what would be the next one, hypothetically? I don't know. Black Clover is really good. Like you said that really last week. Yeah. Opening. Yeah. Yeah. Um I'm, I'm glad I'm, you like Black Clover. Uh, yeah, it's it's a really good song. It's a really good song. Bleach has some gnarly yeah. openings. Like yeah. some really gnarly ones. Gintama. Yeah has yep. a particular song that I listen to every single fight. Um, top of my head, can't think of it. But Gintama's got like some really good bangers. I know this is mainstream, but you know what it does as well? Attack on Titan has some bangers in the opening soundtrack. Honestly, it does. Man. It does. The Dude, it's it's not bad. And then I, I remember playing around the house and John standing there like this. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's so good. The, the oh. kids come up. The kids come up and salute me like this sometimes. <laughs> because I've got in the game on the Xbox. It is such so, a good yeah. show, honestly. Yeah, it's cool. Next question it's that we bad. have an MMA one from Fezel Fezel. I hope I pronounced that right. Should MMA scoring be changed? If so, what? And the reason why I brought this question up because someone else barbecue chips also has some <laughs> suggestions on the exact same question. Some suggestions they had. One, go minute by minute instead of round by round. Two, open scoring. And three, allow knees on ground and 12 to 6 el- uh, elbows. That was some of their suggestions. But Rob, do you think MMA scoring should be changed or rules should be changed in that regard? Um, I think I would like to go back to pride scoring. Okay. So I'm pretty sure there were two 10-minute rounds and if there was no winner by the 10th, the two ten minutes, it was declared a draw, if I'm not mistaken. Interesting. Um, and if, and if it wasn't a draw, then it should be a draw because I believe ten minutes is a good time period to try and get people out of there. You got two of them, yeah. and if you can't get someone out of there mm. within twenty minutes, then no one deserves to win. Yeah. You know, obviously both dudes survived. Like we're trying to emulate fighting to the death, like warriors, right? And uh, yeah, and Pride had foot like head stomps, head knees to the head, all that sort of jazz. Anything you could fathom, it had. And I, I like that rule set. I think ten minutes changes the dynamics of fights like you would not believe. Yeah. So um, yeah, that's my opinion. Fair. All right. And the last question we've got is from Bumpy and Grind. What were the biggest changes you noticed? Yeah, that was a great username. What, <laughs> what were the biggest changes, Rob, you noticed in your opponents when switching from non-UFC to UFC competition? I guess they hit a lot harder. 
<laughs> I'm non UFC. No, dudes in local shows hit just as hard. They're just not as good as landing them, and Fair. they're not as they're not as good as avoiding them. Mm. Whereas you see, once you reach like top ten, top five, especially top five, those dudes, yeah, they know how to take shots. They know how to give shots. They know when to do things. And when not to do things, and then that just changes the the dynamic. That's why when you when you're in that top five, finishes start to get a little slower. You notice yeah. that in a lot of a lot of the championship fights and a lot of things like that, the finishes are hard to hard to try and secure. All right. Well, those are all the questions that we had. Thank you so much to everyone that's uh, asked your questions. Sorry, we can't get to all of them. There's a lot of questions in every podcast, but we'll try to get to as many. As possible, we are over the hour mark. Rob, we're doing pretty good, man, at, at these podcasts. I think <laughs> once again, one hour eleven minutes. I I wanted to do half an hour when we started. <laughs> you notice I was trying my best to kind of like because I could see it getting to over the hour mark, but I I guess we got there in the end. <laughs> oh, mate, I just. I gotta shut up. I end up talking too much crap, <laughs> especially once you get me started on anime and games. I just can't shut up. Well, like because the games news, especially, it's gonna be so slow until we get all the games events come June and everything. So once that happens, I got, I got, I got my entire Steam library sitting here to talk through. I got some bangers to recommend, like. Yeah, you know, feed them to you next week, folks. Do you know what we need to do? We need to have a session on like our backlog. What are like our top games in our backlog that we need to finish? Maybe we'll save that for, for another mm. episode. But if you've been watching or listening until this point, thank you so much for watching episode four of MMA Arcade. God, I love it. It's so good. MMA Arcade, MMA yeah. Arcade, both of them work. Rob, man, it's been awesome. I've enjoyed this. Mate. It has. Thank you, everybody at home. Thank you very much for tuning in. Don't forget to leave comments and questions below on whether you want to see us do live streams, whether you want us, uh, what you want us to answer the week after, what we could be doing better or what we are doing great. Yeah, leave a comment below. Yeah. Listen to the platforms. Love you guys. Thank you very much. Take care.